Hi everyone, welcome to Rocket Rose Art. My name is Jeff, um, and in this video, I'm going to show you in detail how to make puddle cabochons, um, both in a um, glass kiln and a microwave kiln. Okay, this uh, video is going to be uh, a little long because I am going to go into quite a bit of detail about making these cabochons. Um, I will cover everything from like choosing your glass, the sizes, um, how to fuse it all up initially, break it, refusing it back into the cabochons, cleaning, a bit about safety, and at the end I'll talk also a little bit about uh, microwave kilns. Now this is what we're going to try and achieve, is some puddle capuchons like this. So um, we'll get into it shortly. Please, um, if you want to see more of these videos, uh, subscribe, turn on the notifications and share this with anybody you think that will help. Okay, let's get into making some puddle capuchons. In this project, the only materials you'll need is the glass in whatever colours you choose. You can use opal, you can use transparent, you can even use dichroic if you wish. You can see here, I've gone for a natural palette. Um, I've chosen, um, and this is all bullseye by the way, I've chosen 0309, which is cinnabar. Uh, that's three mil. Um, 0320, which is marigold yellow, which is only two mil. 0212, which is olive green, three mil. And 0138, marzipan. Now I will cut all of these into about 80 by 30 sizes. So now I'm just going to cut all these pieces to size. Uh, before cutting I lubricate my cutter just by uh, putting in a little bit of kerosene. Um, and I'll just cut all these. This is going to be the smallest piece so it's about 82 mils long. I cut that to about 30 mils. Cut this to about 82. And to about 30. Same with the yellow. Finally, get the, um, forget the name of this. If you hear a noise in the background, that's my wife actually making jewelry. That's Anne, of course. I only have one wife. So we've got all our pieces now. Now we just have to dam them up and then fuse them. Now remember, you can make it whatever size you like and use whatever colours you like. Um, there's no rules about that, so it's really just up to you. Of course, before I stack these, I need to clean them. Um, they may have kerosene on them and um, we don't want that because it may devitrify. So basically all I use is a window cleaner, one that doesn't have a lot of chemicals on that in it. Small spray, both sides, and give them a very good firm wipe to make sure it gets off everything, including that kerosene that would have been on my cutter. And I'll put them on a small piece of clean paper. Um, so I have a... Um, a ream of paper especially for this and uh, it's lasted me for a very very long time so important clean glass always
Okay. Okay. Um, to dam this up, I've just got a small shelf and I've got some pieces of cut up sh kiln shelf. These were cut up on a diamond saw and I'm lining this with uh, bullseye thin file paper. You could, uh, uh, you know, you could do anything you like. You could use fiber paper if you like and uh, put um, kiln wash on the, on the actual shelf itself. But what I've done here is I've got a piece of thin fire on the bottom that these are sitting on. And I've got small strips of thin fire around here. So what I'm going to do is I just lay this up in here. Get this little strip of thin fire, place it in there, put it in and then just push everything together. Okay, now the thin fire here overlaps here through this join, same here, same here, same here. Don't try and cut the thin fire to fit neatly, just overlap it on each corner. This is ready for our kiln, so um, I'll take it over to the kiln. Okay, um, next day we're out of the kiln, all fused up, and uh, I'm just going to show you what I do um, with the burnt fibre paper and that. And normally I just take these off, like that, and you can see sometimes I have a little bit of fibre paper attached to them. I then take a normal um, spray bottle and just give them a light spray and that settles it all down. Just make sure I saturate everything so I don't get any dust. And I can lift off our fused um, piece here and do the same. I will saturate that down. Then to clean all that off, I would Scrape these off onto some newspaper. Hopefully you can see that. I'm scraping it off with a scraper. Same with this. Scrape off the worst of it. And then the shelf. Into the newspaper. What I would then do is get a wet rag, I'd wipe the shelf down, everything down, obviously wash the uh, wash the piece and um, dispose of everything that I've scraped off into the newspaper here. Um, I'll do all that and then I'll come back and show you the finished piece. Well not the finished piece at least, the fused piece. Um, something else I forgot that I need to mention is if you're worried about the water on the kiln shelf um, and these pieces, it's only very surface. Um, after you've wiped it all down, it just needs to dry for a while and uh, you'll be ready to go again. So no problem with spraying them down, uh, spraying it all down um, and I think you'll find that a lot of people do it that way. Right, here we are, I have um, cleaned up all my shelves and this is our finished piece. Um, you can see the different uh, layers of colour on the side. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to score it randomly on the back here. I'm then going to turn it over and um, support it on the ends, put it on newspaper, then more newspaper over the top and then I'm going to come along and hit it with a hammer. What I'm trying to achieve here are 
chunks of this uh, breaking up with a flat side so I can then layer them or put them on a kiln shelf full fuse it down into the final cabochons um, so let's have a go at scoring this on the back and then I'll, um, I'll show you the, and then I'll break it up and show you the result Okay, now I'll set up and I'll smash it to pieces. Oops, sorry about that. I didn't turn the video on for the most fun part. Um, I'll try again. And you can see some of it's broken up here and I've got this little bit left to break up. So um, we'll try again. smaller maybe not I think we might leave it at that and we're going to have some smaller ones here Got a lot of little shards here um, I will put all those in a bottle which is what I normally do you never throw anything away and they may get used at some point in some other project before I go on any further there's something I need to say that I didn't say earlier and that is pay attention to safety when you're cleaning off your kiln shelves, still wear a mask. It is still possible that even though we've wet it, you can get fibres um, into the air and you could inhale them. Also, when you're breaking the glass up, please wear safety goggles. Um, shards do fly and you don't want um, any glass in your eyes. Now, I this particular slab that I made up here is only a small one. You could make bigger ones if you wished. I prefer small, especially with a new pattern. If I uh, particularly like the pattern, yes, I may make a bigger one. Um, the, um, uh, w this score didn't work really well. I think that was because it was a fairly thick slab. Um, and when you get these thick slabs, you could cut them on a saw if you have either a diamond saw or one of the ring saws. Now these are all sitting on thin wire paper set up on the shelf and pretty much ready to go. Now as far as laying them up these are pretty good I had a flat side on which I could lay them up. The important thing to do when you're laying these up is look at um, just how much they may tilt to one side. If a piece tilts a lot to one side it will fall down and you'll get a lot of one color on the top of the cabochon. So try and keep them as upright as possible. Okay, so I think this is all ready to go on the shelf, uh, sorry, in the kiln. And um, when it's all fused up, I'll clean everything up and I'll come back and I'll show you the finished cabochons. Well, we're back. Everything's come out of the kiln and um, and I've cleaned them all up and as you can see here they've turned out very nice um, we have a range of different sizes and shapes and um, I think a lot of these could would look very nice if they're wire wrapped or or put in a setting or something like that now I promised that I would talk about microwave kilns you can follow the same process in a microwave kiln you just won't be able to make the slab very big um, but you pretty much follow the same process break it up Put them on edge and fuse them down into cabs a bit slower because you probably got to do each cab on its own but um, you will get pretty much the same result here is another way you can make puddle cabochons and you can use up all that scrap glass you've got just simply make sure you've got a square edge on one side if you have to grind it on either a wheel or just a pad or something like that even sandpaper if you if you want to and um, stack them up nice and tight and close to each other and then fuse them down into a puddle that part you may get uh, a nice round shape or a nice oval more than likely you'll get a slightly odd shape but it will be still very pleasing well i hope you enjoyed that 
I certainly had fun making them. And um, you can see that all you need to do is um, choose different colors and you can make some really nice cabochons. So please subscribe if you want to see more of these videos, turn on those notifications. And um, if you think somebody else will get some benefit out of the video, share it and like it and all that jazz. So until the next one, I uh, will say bye for now.